Okay, so it's just a, a short little video on how to use the Cricut Design Space. Uh, I've made an outline of a wall, so that's 20 centimetres by 11. Tend to give them sensible uh, sort of origin locations as well, just because it makes everything easy. The only sort of bad thing if you're used to CAD is that the origin is always from the, the top top left corner because uh, if you think of the, how it goes in on the mat and cuts itself uh, whereas obviously CAD and stuff you, your origin is the, the bottom uh, left so it sort of perhaps should work then upside down but that gets confusing. Uh, so I've just made two squares uh, just from the shapes menu, just simple squares. Obviously that drops in a grey square of odd dimensions. I presume it's some sort of uh, imperial one, but if you need to change it, unlock it so you can do width separately, 2.5, Eight, two point five. So we've got a little, a little window. Um, one of the things then. So if we place our door, we want it say in the middle of the the wall. We don't want any of the wall to run underneath. So the easiest way: click the square, hold shift, click the the blue door. You can see over here they're both highlighted. If you go to a line, line bottom, it moves the door down. Occasionally it will be inconvenient and it'll move the other piece up. And obviously if you've aligned several things then that becomes problematic. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just change the window of the, the colour of the window just to make it slightly obvious and more interesting. Control C and Control V to copy and paste. So we'll put a window there. Obviously I want my, my two windows to be the same height. So if that one's selected, select both of them. Again, align, we'll center them. And then you can decide with them both centered and selected, you can change the X, Y position. So what we can do is change the X, we'll just make it six, slightly out of this, say 6.5. Nope, 66.5, that's better. And we'll just make it seven, just, but obviously, yeah, it's a sort of difficult thing. I changed that from 7.3 to 7, and it goes up the page rather than down. Um, which, yeah, isn't uh, easy. Now, if I want to, to make these as cutouts, um, then there's sort of two ways of doing it. I can select my base material, hold shift, select the door. Again, you can see over here, go to slice. You then create a slice result in three parts because you get the main part that you've just cut out of, the bit you've cut out of it, and the bit you use to do the cutting. And they've been all brought to the forward, so that's why the two windows have disappeared. So if I hide the slice result that was the blue door, you then see you have the result, which is the, the wall that you've just cut out. Hide that and you get an arch. Now, if I want to do the windows, I can either send the wall to the back or from the, the menu bar, I can select the wall, wall shift, select a square, you can't see it if I hit slice. There, you've now got the outline. 
you can see it's created more slice results. This time it's because the, the window is behind the wall. The first layer you see is the solid brick wall over the window, so you can hide that. It shows you the window cutout. Hide that. And then if we do it again, slice results for the wall, hold shift for select the other square and slice it again. You once again get the three slice results. If you hide all of those, you then get a wall with a door and two windows. It's not the most intuitive system, uh, you've got to say, but it does work and it allows you to sort of build up things um, sort of piece by piece. The alternative you can do is if you, if you undo it all until we've just got um, the slices and or the four base shapes, we'll just make them the windows the same colour. What you can do then is, nope, don't do that. Shift, click all three. And if we combine these, so we can weld these together. And now if I, I'll just hide the, turn the visibility in the wall off, hide it. So there's our door and three, or door and two windows, but they're all one piece. So turn that back on. Oh, I've moved that. So again, select that, hold shift, select the wall, align, align the bottom, align, uh, center horizontally. That's good. And now with them both selected, hit slice. And this time we only get one operation. We've got the layer that is the, I suppose if you think of like bet calf kits, uh, this is the die layer that you're punching through the card. So you can turn that off. You then obviously have the little infills of card that you don't want, turn that off and you get the result which is our wall with the cutouts in it. Um, handy for that if you want to sort of make a repeating pattern with a couple of pieces and then carry it across uh, rather than trying to position each individual piece delicately at once. Um, so that's that and then you can copy duplicate if you want a back wall or whatever. Um, anyway, hope that was helpful. Rattled through it quite quick. Um, there is another way of doing this where you basically import an image and then it will recognize it, but it's still not foolproof as I found. So I'll maybe try and cover that again. But okay, cheers. Bye for now.